Hi, I'm Michael Burns, and uh, welcome to my garden. Okay, I, I have about 90 plants in my plot here. It's about 25 feet by 25 feet, I believe. I space my plants two feet apart, and my walking rows are three feet apart. Um, I also have to cover all my plants because of, mostly because of Japanese beetles. If I don't completely cover, they'll just destroy every flower I have. <clears throat> but it, it also helps with the colors of the flower, so it kind of works well too. I get really rich colors when the, uh, when the sun doesn't fade them. Okay, one of my favorite blooms is Edna C. It's a great show flower, but for some reason this year, they tended to want to be a little bit clock face, which is a little bit straight down. So what I do is I get myself a cane. And I put some cotton on the end of it. I get it up in under the bloom. I give it a push. Tie it back up. And every couple of days I'll push it a little bit higher. And eventually it'll sit at a nice 45 degree angle. Just perfect for show. This, this year's been a strange year as there's no shows. I've been doing a lot more crossing with my dahlias this year. I'm going to pretty much cross everything with everything and see what happens. I don't have to cut them for shows, so may as well try them for seeds. So uh, th this one is Raycraft John, and this one is Barbary Drum. And they just happen to be close enough to each other where I can just take them and rub the two of them together. Pretty much that's all the bees do, so. It'll be interesting to see what I get from those. And now that we're actually here, this is Barbary Drum. Probably one of my favoriteest dahlias there is. A good British variety. Doesn't get too tall, even in here. But the stems for me tend to get very long. I think it's the shade. Uh, this would be another one, four to six up. It's a good sized dahlia. Really, really good show dahlia. seed pod that I have maturing on this Barbary drum. Uh, every, every day or so I'll come along and I'll just squeeze out all the water like this just so it doesn't rot. It helps the seeds to get nice and dry. Okay here we've got Cheval Megan, another great British variety. I think it's as, as a red goes, it's very hard to beat this red. Really good form on it, great stems. It's another one you would want to grow maybe six to eight up, just to keep the size right. Again, you can see I'm uh, doing a lot of seed collecting, letting the bees, or even me, do the work. I like to remove these back petals so the uh, seed pod doesn't rot. Okay, well, I, I, you're right. I would take it right down to almost just uh, no color at all on that one, but, uh, I like uh, Chevelle Megan as well. To me, it's one of the ones that hold its color best uh, in, in the, the whole red palette of things. Um, it doesn't fade uh, the way that uh, many do. And uh, it, as Michael was saying, uh, if you grow it uh, with no more than eight up, uh, the, the stems are great and you get, uh, you get good form on them. Uh, my garden, I tend to wind up having perhaps more, but uh, more up, but uh, I just do it for the uh, cut flower thing uh, if I have something that's good for the show, um, I'll, I'll cut it and send it in. But uh, 
uh, basically, I, I grow more just for the appearance in the garden and for cut flowers and for uh, making people happy when I drop it off. But uh, they, these are exhibition grade. Yeah, that's what I do. I, I disbud almost every branch and yeah, it would be hard to find one that's not disbudded. I only have 90 plants, so it's pretty easy to do every day. Yeah, even the tiny ones, I have them all disbudded. Okay, this is another one of my favorites. This is Blight and Softer Gleam. The color on this guy is just spectacular. Great show flower. Again, I would grow this one six to eight up. Uh, I actually did an experiment this year over whether cuttings would be better than just coming from tubers. And uh, this is a cutting plant and the one beside it is a tuber plant and I don't see any difference whatsoever. They're the same height, the flowers are the same, exactly the same. I don't see no difference in doing a cutting over a tuber plant. Okay, this one is a, another British variety. It's called Shire, Shirewell Greta, I think they call it, but we'll just call it Shirewell Greta. Um, it's, I, I, I've had this one for like three years and this is the best that it's ever looked. I'm not sure why but they, they're absolutely stunning. The, the depth alone in these blooms is crazy. It's almost as big as the top of it. They're, they're, they're doing really, really well this year. This is another one where you'd probably do about five up, one, two, three, I've got six, six up on it. Yep. Six up on it would be good too. Uh, I would totally disbud it all the way down the stem. So really I'm only gonna get six blooms off this this year, but if you're growing for show, that's pretty much what you do. Okay, this is actually another British variety and probably I would say this is my all-time number one dahlia right here. I got a few of those, but this one probably is the top. This one is called, uh, I'm not sure if it's Rycroft Dave's Choice or Dave's Choice. Here in uh, Canada, I believe we call it Rycroft Dave's Choice, but in Britain it's just Dave's Choice. A wonderful variety, uh, doesn't need covered. It could rain all day on this, and this pal this bloom will stay perfect. Except for this bloody Japanese beetle hiding right in here. This, th this would be the reason why I have to completely cover all my dahlias right here, is this little guy. They come in here and they just chew everything. Uh, Dave's Choice, I would grow this about 8 to 10 up if you can get it. Uh, definitely needs a good feed of potash probably the end of July or you will not get good stems on it. These ones are pretty good right now. Ne needs a good heavy feed of it. Even a couple of feeds a year of really high potash just to get the stems nice and hard. Or else you'll get them to the show and they'll be flapping right over on you but my, one of my all-time favorites. Okay, in my jungle right here, I have uh, another British variety, which is called, um, totally blanked out, no, it's called Avoca Amanda. And uh, it's kind of got a little tall. It's like 10 feet, I believe. But uh, I'm not sure if it's because of the shading or not, but I, I think generally this is a tall grower anyway. But. Uh, it's definitely worth it. It's got the most beautiful flowers on top, if you could see them. <laughs> like, believe me, take my word for it, they really are spectacular. I'll be cutting this one here for our show in a couple of days, for our virtual show. Uh, it's just beautiful, beautiful dark sugar pink. Lovely it is, but very tall. <laughs> Okay, this variety is one of my own varieties that I hybridized a few years ago. Uh, I've been growing it for maybe three years now. It's, uh, it's called Air Daniel. Uh, Air is spelled E-I-R-E. It's the Irish for Ireland, I believe. So, and uh, I called it after my father who passed away a good few years ago. So it's a nice BB dark red formal deck. Uh, it's not released yet, but I'm hopefully going to send it out to the American Trial Gardens next year and see what they think about it. So hopefully we'll see it all over the show soon. It would be nice.
Okay, this is another seedling of mine, actually hybridized the same year as Air Daniel. This is uh, Air Patricia, named after my partner's mum. Uh, it's a nice little formal deck. It, it, it's got nice strong stems on it, doesn't grow very big. It's got a nice centers in it, Go, goes all the way to back to the stem. Sits a little bit top heavy, but that's okay. Every once in a while, flowers will do that. And uh, this year has been a very hot year. And for some reason, good, a good few of my dealers are a few weeks behind. This is Snowho, this is Snowho Doris. Yes, it is. And uh, by now I usually be cutting flowers off this like crazy, but I think with the heat we've had this year, it's put all the blooms back a couple of weeks. So I'm still waiting on this one and hopefully we get some before the frost comes. Okay, we all know how dahlias love water, but uh, the one thing I don't like doing is carrying water, watering cans to the plants. So what I use is a, a drip, a drip system. I just attach my hose in here and uh, if it's dry, I'll probably give every row, it's about a 50 feet uh, length of drip hose. I'll probably run it for about a half an hour, two or three times a week if it's really hot. And that seems to do the trick. Okay, this is my, uh, my little dahlia seedling patch. Uh, I think now my new thing is to try and hybridize my own dahlias. It's, it's like, to me it's like Christmas day every day when I come out and see the blooms starting to open up and you just don't know what you're gonna get. Uh, I, I sure wish this was part of my seedling patch, but it's not. <laughs> this is blight and softer gleam that I just put a pot tuber in there. But the rest are all my seedlings. Uh, they do grow quite tall as well in the first year. Uh, I believe I have about 44 plants in here for a, for a two feet by 12 feet row is a lot of seedlings. Uh, Which are your favorites? My favorite, uh, there's no flower on it right now, but it was a really nice orange formal deck that looked almost like this one, but had two or three times more petal in it. It was a really nice one. And I have another really nice one back here. That apparently the color is supposed to be really nice. It's a, a creamy yellow, nice little formal deck. I'll give it another go next year to see what happens. And this is the first time this one has flowered. It's pretty nice. It's almost like a snow ho doris ball. That, that'll get another year for sure too. Okay, this is another seedling from this year, which is, uh, has improved. Earlier in the year, it didn't look too good, but it's definitely getting better. It's a nice butter yellow color. Uh, the ones I would keep need for me need to have half decent form and lots of paddle something like this I, I'm just letting it stay here for a little splash of color but I definitely won't be keeping this it's uh there's no petals whatsoever grows with an open center just for now it's just for a splash of color and I actually won't be keeping this one either too because it's it's very low in petal it needs to be more and uh, another one back here which I will be it's got loads of paddle but too much and the back's paddles all start to fall out before the center closes so i probably won't be keeping that one either i think this is the same this is the same but they seem to be getting better as it's getting cooler so it's a hard decision sometimes 